right, welcome back guys. It is me, Allison, and I am here with Kyle and our special guest, Matlock. Hello. What do Hello. you guys have to say? Hello. That was a good thing to say. It was good. That was a good... Welcome. Greetings. Anyway, so I'm going to start Thank you for off. having me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start this off classic style where I'm going to ask Kyle a question. He's going to try and figure out what the hell I'm attempting to convey. Oh, okay. But Kyle, I'm not picking one this time. You guys, have you conspired against me to select this topic without I was, my I was nice input? to Matt and offered topics that he might be vaguely interested I, in. I didn't fair. prepare, though. That's I didn't fair. prepare at all. I there is no preparing. You can't today, prepare. So. No prepare. Um, anyway, okay. so... I'm the only one that's out of the loop, I guess. <laughs> Kyle, the real question is, why did we go up instead of down? Are we talking, like... Like, like gravity, or... Yeah, kind of, actually. <laughs> yeah, that is that is kind of what I'm talking or about. Or philosophically. <laughs> so, like, we went to the moon, right? Yeah. But we still don't know what exists within our own oceans. Oh, sure. So here, here's, here's what we're talking about today. Okay. It's like, this is why, why didn't we go down? Why didn't we go down? <laughs> I mean, we did. <laughs> what happened? I think it's actually just... <laughs> James I, Cameron made a movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? Think, You're talking think, about... James Cameron is a famous ocean explorer. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he's a famous director as well, but he's also has a passion for ocean explorers. I think he went to like the Mariana's Trench. He used trench. his movie making money to to like build himself a, a little pod that he descended into the ocean with. And I don't know if he did anything useful. While yeah, he he, down there. he tell- might have gone deeper than in, any man in, in into I the ocean. I cannot tell if you guys are fucking with no, me. No, no, I'm it's serious. A real thing. Is this the Titanic guy? <laughs> this happened. Yeah. <laughs> you could- the Titanic guy built himself a little pod and yeah. then he just like dove into the ocean. Yeah. Remember the footage from the Titanic where they actually went down to the Titanic and shot it with like oh, movie yeah. camera? But that wasn't the pod. That was a different thing. Yeah, he also, that, he built like after Avatar, he also went and did. Yeah. That like, just his speaks to his passion private. about ocean exploring. Yeah. Okay. So how did we successfully like go to the moon? But then I, so like we I think can't. the answer weirdly, it, it, it sounds counterintuitive, but I think the answer is going to the moon is actually easier than digging up the earth. You don't have to dig. You just dive. Or diving. Because actually there are, there are, I think there are. That can't more, be true. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, because uh, you're the only one here who probably could. Because <laughs> uh-huh. neither of us know what we're talking about. It's but uh, I think the challenges of building something that can survive in space are actually easier than building something that can survive at the depths of the ocean. Sounds correct. I don't know. I think. The, well, I think why would that be I, true? I think, I think it's largely a pressure thing. If I remember right, I think it's easier to pressurize like uh, like oxygen and atmosphere on the inside of a container and fire it into a void than it is to make something that that can survive like the crushing external pressure of the world's ocean by the time you get down to the bottom of the. Of is the, that why? Is that why you thing. think that we've neglected to know more about space? I mean, ocean. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of people that dedicate their lives to knowing about the ocean. I just yeah. don't, it doesn't have mass appeal, probably, because, like, everyone, everyone goes outside and looks up at the moon at some point. Yeah. And you're like, like what, what's out there? So it's just because we can't see it, That's you kind think? of my yeah. second thought, actually, is maybe, like, maybe, maybe we didn't. Maybe this is, I don't know a whole lot about ocean exploration, but maybe it's just because, like, like, to put it simply, space is sexier. Like, yeah. they just, they, that was a big thing where it was, like, the president announced we were going to the moon and it became part of our culture. Like, space travel was, like, a whole thing. Yeah, imagine but, like, Space Jam in, with octopuses instead of aliens. That's a terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. Okay, so then here, here's here's the future concept, right? We abandon space for who knows what happens. Okay. Like maybe we can't go to space. Maybe there's too many satellites in space, sure. right? Because it got all clouded and stuff. With wait, uh, this is this is like a hypothetical. We have abandoned space in this future. Yeah, yeah. Like space is over because they put too many satellites in, and now every time you look at the stars, it's just like big advertising screens. Or we just found so, out one of those one of those like horrifying uh, existential possibilities of like. There's literally nothing out there, or it's physically impossible for us to reach anything yeah. in space worth so, going to. Or we try to go to Mars and we hit the wall, Truman Show style. Right. And we're like, oh, exactly. God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the only way is down. Uh-huh. What do? <laughs> I mean, it's probably like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, I guess I could see if, like, <laughs> the air is unbreathable on the surface and we can't live on the moon. Then it's like we build uh, yeah, yeah. substructures underground or underwater, which is possible now. There's like tourist restaurants that they build underwater with glass walls. Like it's not it's possible. I just don't think it's like cost effective or people give a shit. Okay. Shoot, I cursed. I wish. No, that's OK. I wish 
You're allowed to curse. I wish that people could have seen the looks on your faces when I just went, <laughs> what do? You both just like. <laughs> but no, okay. It was an open so, question. Okay, I'm so. To, I'm trying to decide the angle of the uh, of the, the thought experiment, I guess, for this episode. Oh, like, I don't know. Exactly I mean, go, are, go, are we, go like, wherever. Are we on, like, so are we talking about like what is so, the okay. underwater, like what is what what is the underwater society that we're building? My, or my, what do we think we'll find down there? My or, like, note says you know, as it was frying in the hot sun, it says, is underwater closer to space? <laughs> <laughs> closer to space? Closer like, than space. Okay, I'm, I'm to try, space. I'm going to try and help space. you is, jump is this gap under, that is, I think you're trying to clear here. Oh, okay. Which, <laughs> uh, there, I, I, it's quite possible that there's a lot of, like, underwater probably has weirder stuff in it than we will actually find in space. Right. You so think like, so? Because I, space yeah. is too big, or I think, because well, yeah, space I think partially. Out. I think I think the possibilities of things that exist in outer space are probably greater, even possibly infinite. Oh, I remember. But we can't. Wait, we're never going to find them. You inspired but the me. Right there. No, right? you're right. You're right. Because I remember thinking like, we're so we've spent oh, so many years obsessed with aliens, but like, have you seen the things in the ocean? Right. Like the the idea of the little men in like space, like little alien humanoid things so outrageously bland compared to the things <laughs> in the ocean like the stuff in the ocean is so scary there's um there's like a youtube channel and it's kind of like a podcast style where it's literally just a bunch of marine biologists like drop a camera to the bottom of the ocean and then comment on the things that float by and attempt to identify <laughs> them it is so boring because yeah. it's, it's you know it's 10 hours of literally seeing nothing and then like one thing comes by and they all wake up like they've been snoring for the last two hours and they're like <gasps> Oh my god, that's a special jellyfish or whatever. Well, I think most of the ocean is unexplored, right? I don't remember yeah. the actual percentage, but like a, lar- a, a very large percentage of our own ocean is unexplored. And I think it's mostly because, like, to be dumb about it, there's water in the way. Like, in space, <laughs> you can stick a big telescope yeah. out there and point it at things, and you can see because there's nothing blocking your vision. Mm. But in our own ocean... Like we have, we have like a few different things that can help us figure out what the landscape under the ocean looks like. But like, you just can't, you can't physically point a camera down there. You don't think? It, so do, you, think do you guys think it's super weird that that like we're we were we <laughs> exist right next to the water and somehow are further away from understanding it than <laughs> planets we can see in the There's actually of light there's more away. water than land. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I was just reading something that they found that there were like other other more more habitable planets than earth that are like a hundred light years away or something like that which is like we know that but like we don't know most of the species of the things in the ocean right yeah how did i just i can't even we i I I don't know that really bothers me i'm buzzing in my answer with there's water in the way i'm gonna lock mine in as the stupidest one (laughs) i don't i don't like i don't like it (laughs) it's like a funding problem i'm sure there's plenty of people that are like that are dedicated to learning as much about the ocean as they possibly can but it's like it's so must be so freaking expensive to like go to the bottom of the mariana's trench because we don't we don't have we don't have an ocean nasa I yeah, mean, exactly. that's what it is. We don't have an organization built specifically for the sake of exploring. Okay, but we all agree that we water. should, right? Yeah, so maybe that's what it is. Maybe <laughs> we need. To, maybe we need. To, we need to form. Okay. Ocean, ocean, like like water NASA. And we never would have gone to space if we didn't have to beat communism anyway. So it's like right, just, exactly. That was, that was, was a fluke. It was an arms race. Space, space was a decoy to oh. make missiles. Yeah. Okay, right? so <laughs> okay, so what we have to do is establish a Russian threat to the ocean. Yes. Got it. I don't think yeah. this is a terrible idea. A Russian threat to us via the ocean. Okay, yeah. but it doesn't bother but you see, guys. This, how well, this like, did happen. And we made submarines, right? So, like, this actually oh, sure. has... One, basically, uh, war drives all human advancement. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. Okay, but it doesn't bother you guys that, like, we live... Like, there were just years and years of important, like, media and, and education based around, like, figuring out if there was other life out in the universe when we literally didn't know, like... M- 80% of the things in the water that we exist next to. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Well, I mean, uh, like, we can we can, we can, can at least assume that there's not, like, a civilization we could communicate with underwater. I well, mean, yeah, some so people probably believe it, I guess but, like, it, the it, alien thing is, like, we could find someone that we could actually talk okay, to. Okay, so you of, haven't, wait, hang on, so okay. you haven't read the book about the chick talking about octopus, right? Who? There's this chick. Oh, God. There's this chick. Someone on the Discord told me about it. I think it was Ursa. Shit, Ursa no, told me. Ursula? Ursa. Ursa. 
Ursa Polaris is a is a someone on our Discord. She had mentioned to me about um, this maybe marine biologist. Anyway, she has a very very serious relationship with octopi. Octopi uh-huh. um, to the point of like. <laughs> She's going it's steady a, with an octopus. It's inappropriate, yeah. but she does. Right. She, she does talk about how like incredible they are. Yeah, and how they tend to appear to really understand humans and the things that we like. They have. They can develop relationships with us. I guess like similar to dogs, but in a in a more like hyper intelligent way. They can kind of grasp humans. I don't really. I don't know a ton about it. They're smart. So like I feel like I feel like that's kind of a cop out of like, oh, nothing in the ocean can can be close enough to humanoids to to be considered as like a, like what exactly were we we were looking well, okay. for like humanoid think, creatures here, in like other humans and what we, it is. We, to, to answer your question about why space would be a bigger deal is because we already know there's life on our planet. Yeah. That's yeah. not a shock. And right. all the life in the find, ocean is like at least carbon based and yeah. like if we find survives the same way we do. Ocean, I see. It's weird. It might not be something we've seen before, but it's not surprising that it's there. We yeah. know things are on this planet. I see. Okay. If you find life somewhere else, that's a huge deal because we've never found uh, a recreation of the conditions that allow for life anywhere except for on our own planet. Also, interesting crossover. Uh, the uh, uh, oh gosh, I used to know so much about space, and now it's embarrassing how little I know about space. <laughs> yeah. but I believe on Europa, uh, it's a ice moon. Uh, uh, Is this a around real Jupiter, thing? I believe. Yeah. Okay, okay, and like that's a really good candidate for finding life in space because uh, they they're planning on like drilling. I don't know if they're ever going to, but like theoretically, they're planning on like drilling down through the miles and miles of ice where there's liquid water. Yeah, and like it's been like that for so many millennia. There's a good chance there's at least microscopic or, you know. Yeah. Who yeah. knows? Maybe an entire underwater civilization down there. Well, which I guess is actually good. Which yeah. is more interesting. Yeah. Like, okay. sea creatures in space more interesting <laughs> right. than sea yeah. creatures yeah. on Earth. This definitely, <laughs> you're absolutely right. And this gives me hope of, like, mermaids. Like, like alien mermaids? It's just more, <laughs> more water to, put, yeah, alien mermaids. I mean, I already want them to be real. It seems like it's possible to some But degree. a mermaid is like a cross between a human and a fish, and an alien mermaid would be neither. Like, literally impossible to be at, like either of those things. Well, you don't know what would have evolved over there. <laughs> it could be something. Well, so we, we, we inherently identify aliens as being humanoid, or at least we want to, because that's yeah. how well, we like in like, perceive in things. In, like, silly pop culture, like, no one that's seriously looking for aliens thinks they're going to find, like, little gray men. Well, Yeah. <laughs> That makes there are sense. Theories on this, but We've actually, I feel like it's uh, a different topic than the one you wanted to talk about on this podcast. <laughs> you are so overestimating my intention with any of these topics. You let welcome me, to the Ocean Podcast, where we talk about space for thirty minutes. Uh-huh. You let me again, and I'll never get over this. They've heard me complain already, but you just you left me in the sun for hours <laughs> and went to think of podcast topics, and like just the first day. three were like solid. And then, like, I felt each idea melting my brain a little further. And this is number 10 on a list of 15, so... This one afternoon is going to come back to bite me for the next five months. <laughs> so where do, you, where do you think that this should go, then? Where's What's the direction that's oh, I just supposed wanted, to... I just didn't want to distract from the... I thought you wanted to talk about the ocean, so I didn't want to get Look, is underwater... I didn't even put a... Cl- it just says, is underwater closer space? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all... Those are the words. The words that my brain is developed. Underwater closer space. Okay, so what you meant was, can we not get the same experience from going to space, but by water, which is right there without all the effort, pretty much. Right. That's kind of what it was. Right, but it sounds like you've 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 ex- you've gotten rid of that with them. Um, it's not easier. I, there's I too mean, much yeah, water in the I think, I think there's I think it's different challenges. I think there's also similar discoveries to be had. There's less of you. There's definitely weird stuff in the water. Right. Like there was there was this whole. I don't know if this ever got proven, but if you guys if you guys ever heard of the bloop before i think i have I've heard it's of- like it was it was some kind of it was just a sound yeah. that, like instruments like oh, underwater instruments started picking yeah. up there was like this really deep like bloop noise yeah and no one was able to figure out where it was coming from i don't know if they ever did yeah it's probably they like might- an underwater pimple that popped <laughs> but it was like it was like steady it was repeated. whatever the earth version of that is yeah. obviously it was it was Volcanoes? like i think it was fairly regular yeah. but like like it was too big to be any kind of human machinery or anything yeah. like that and i'm not sure if they could i don't, I don't know if they ever figured out what it is that's so scary but, but it's, yeah, I mean, the ocean's big. Like, they still find new stuff in there pretty regularly, and there are definitely areas where we haven't been able to... Here's my... Like the Marianas Trench, right? That's yeah. still unexplored. There's still, like, large areas that go really deep into the, the Earth that we just haven't been able to see yet, and who knows what's down there. It could be really interesting. It could... But it's... But... but 
it's a different it's probably a different kind of interesting you know it's probably not like like Does other like what you said there's like, like or, or, there, there's a chance we're gonna find a functioning like there aren't any gun guns down there we're not gonna no. run into jar jar in a functioning civilization that we can communicate with the way that maybe you could theoretically do in space you might yeah. find origins of like human life which would be really cool yeah okay here's here's or, here's here's the missing link because you're talking about like i feel like part of what you're saying is like why uh Culturally, do we care more about space than underwater when they're potentially equally? To some degree, yeah. Or maybe even the ocean is more yeah. uh, interesting. But what's missing is like the existential uh, thread. Really? Which is like, you guys are freaking me out. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> space is intertwined with God. Like if we find mm-hmm. aliens, that that changes some things. Yeah. Uh, if you believe in a uh, creation or a God yeah, or true. any of those, that, that like that will crumble people's minds in a way that like a fun squid will not. <laughs> 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 okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Cause the idea is if you find other, other, other existing forms of life, then, then that sort of really messes with the biblical understanding of like earth. Yeah. Right? If, that, if that's what angle you're coming, coming from it. Okay. I, 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 I feel or just it. even non-religious, just, just non-religious existentialism. Just like, yeah, you know, just having a non earth centric uh, yeah. view shattered. Is, uh, but we already talked about the idea that if we did find other life, it probably wouldn't be humanoid, right? No, so like, but it would still be crazy. Well, what if it's closer to an octopus and we just miss out on all that opportunity? Like we run into like a little Cthulhu monster somewhere out in a hundred year, hundred <laughs> hundred light years away. I feel like, I but feel, we could have just been like yeah. chilling with our own octopus okay. to learn more about space Cthulhu. That's like, what I thought you were going to say. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like this is a very particular Allison strain of thinking, which I feel like if we as a nation decided to go find aliens and we spent all this money and time and we went out and we found an octopus hundreds of light years away, yeah. Allison would say, we already have those. <laughs> Why do we care? It's not that we shouldn't care. It's that think of all the missed education we could have had had we studied our own octopus. We can do both. Okay, so why? Okay. So is the theory then that aliens, like, in space are just not going to be anything close to what we currently know anywhere? It's highly no, which unlikely. Is, which, is, which is why it's cool, because like, we are carbon-based life forms, and it's like, what if, what if, there's, a, what if there's a zinc-based life form what that, is like, carbon? exists? What if there's something that breathes <laughs> gold, which is, like, not an un... <laughs> So really, so my really uneducated answer to your wait a question minute, are, is, oh wait, oh wait, hang on. For, okay. Let me ask two questions. Sure. Are sea creatures carbon based? Yes. Yeah, okay. So Earth. what is carbon? Carbon is an element that can have a lot of other elements attached to it. So by pure random chance, we're life made forms of carbon. On Earth started as one of those, and then they all evolved from the same thing. So we're all based on the carbon like okay. yeah. molecules. And if, and if I'm not mistaken, helium is uh, like that, but even more uh, right. Okay, there are other so ones. There, so but there's chance minute. that there's a bigger chance for helium-based life forms in the universe than carbon-based life forms. I think. I could be wrong about okay, that. Okay, but wait a minute. Then, okay, so when I said earlier that we had found more habitable planets other than Earth that exist hundreds of light years away, I assume we're talking about habitable, habitable for ourselves, yes, right? Yeah. So then, yeah, theoretically, so a then there's a could chance be habitable for something else. I mean, if we're looking for things like ourselves, then there actually is a chance that we could run into an octopus like a Cthulhu human somewhere else because that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Okay, so then rip the fact that we didn't study our own octopi. What is that? What? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. All right. So the, the thinking here, the line, the line of thinking. Welcome to this podcast. <laughs> line this is of, insane to me. <laughs> line, of, line of thinking here. Uh-huh. We spent all of our time studying space. You, 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 were there, you were there for half of, I don't know where you got lost. Okay, so we Who find... Who is we and what is all? <laughs> <laughs> humankind in general. And what do you mean by all? What, in which context did like, I say all? Like you're picturing where like all, like every resource on earth is dedicated to finding a different octopus no 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 no. nasa nasa in like a hundred years is like got it figured out we're 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 at those planets we we found that thing doesn't mean ocean exploring uh organizations don't exist yeah yeah yeah. right 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 right. yes but but if it stays roughly the same then we put more money and education into space than we did Uh ocean stuff sure because like russia wasn't fighting for it or whatever so Hundred years into the future, million I don't care. Whatever. We're all still humans though, vaguely. Uh-huh. And so NASA went to found out how to go hundred light years away to one of those planets that's more habitable than Earth. Scooped up an octopus. And there <laughs> there we find like you know, like Thomas from our D D campaign, like a humanoid octopus thing, right? It's like like a mermaid, but sure. octopus head, a human person sure. thing, right? So we've got half of it down. 
we get humans, but we didn't put enough effort and time into our ocean exploration. We don't know nearly enough about octopus except for that one chick who's like vaguely <laughs> inappropriate. That one chick that knows about octopus. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. What does this mean? Okay, so, no, no, now, no, 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 so now we've run into, you know, Cthulhu humanoid octopus person in this other planet, and we just don't know what to do because we didn't what? get good enough with our own oceans because we didn't put in the <laughs> same amount of effort okay. to ocean exploration. I have... To, I have Hi, everybody. Welcome to <laughs> Allison traps us into mansplaining things to her. Um, <laughs> Hold on. I can't even fathom how you're going to attempt to, like... No, no, I'm actually... Okay, all right. Your example... Let's hear it. You literally just said, what if we go find an octopus man on a different <laughs> planet? Like... But, but, like, why does that matter? We've ignored our own octopuses. First off, you just described a completely <laughs> different creature that would absolutely be more that worth be our attention so than an octopus. More. Oh, you're telling me. Okay, wait, hang, we on, hang, find on, hang on. Human, a five foot tall Cthulhu <laughs> walking around somewhere, yes, divert all money <laughs> into that. Wait a minute. So, you're telling me if we find a humanoid octopus thing that we don't need to study our own octopus creatures? I'm saying to help there's a understand? priority list of the thing you just invented definitely should to the very top. Uh-huh. I don't see how that makes any sense. Wait, and like, <laughs> and, and, and there, and we, I okay, can't say this for I'm sure, but like, I'm pretty sure that people know everything there is to know about octopuses at this point, more or less. There are people that have dedicated their lives to octopus. Like maybe the, the culture at large, there's not a TV show starring an octopus. So I don't know, the culture doesn't care about <laughs> octopuses. Like, the, like maybe you want it's them true. to, but like, People care about octopuses, yeah, I promise they, you. Have they, like, not evolved in, like, millions of years? Like, they're, yeah, they're, they're the perfect the life form. As they have been. Okay, so then there's a really good chance we could run into an octopus humanoid creature somewhere in one of those hundred year, light year away planets. Maybe. Okay, so my point isn't that, my point isn't that, like, nobody studies the ocean or knows what an octopus is, uh-huh. but that the efforts are not equivalent you know, like, like, we'll, like yeah, we'll go, like, I agree. like, can you Maybe. imagine I that? I actually I do. don't even know if that's true, though. That's the thing. I don't, I don't know. If, so I guess I go so, back to, well, I don't know if the efforts on. aren't equivalent. Okay. So let me point out that the woman, the woman who's talking, like who, who studies octopus, her whole point is that we've misunderstood the species as like a whole. Like we, we, we significantly overlooked their capabilities and levels of intelligence and forms of communications with but people. But when she says we, does she mean like the scientific community? Yeah, yeah, she just means like, yeah, like us, like people, like us, the scientific community and anyone who cares, I guess. But yeah, that is that is her point, which is that like we don't actually understand an animal that we've determined to to mostly understand. But what I'm hearing is that we're making progress on octopuses. It's Your dreams that, are coming true. It's just that one. <laughs> We're doing it. It's just that one chick, though. <laughs> to my she's, knowledge, she's, she's at the forefront. You know, there, Charles Darwin did it 150 years ago. And okay, fair. That's now a good this point. Chick is doing it now. That's a good point. I'm not. You, you, you guys are mad. Like I'm trying to make a point, but <laughs> I'm just trying to understand. I'm trying to figure out your like how you think the world works. <laughs> like like we go to space, then everyone will be like, drop the octopuses. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about them anymore. I just. <laughs> that's that's truly just, what this podcast is about. Is just learning how Allison views things. You guys, you guys kind great. of understand what I'm like that's trying great. to no, say, though. No, not even a little not. bit. You don't know. Okay, so okay. Okay, it just it in the line of learning about things like yeah. you you run into a humanoid octopus thing. Okay, uh-huh. it seems like the two foundations for understanding it properly would be learning humans and learning octopi separately as creatures and learning everything about both of them, and then studying the humanoid octopus person. No, this is not like what? a class, like basics, like the basics of a humanoid octopus so person would be to I, I study bl- humans think, and octopi. I think Why are you issue, both looking so confused? I think the issue that we're coming up with is okay, so. I'm having trouble clicking with what you're saying, mostly because if we ran into something that looked like a humanoid octopus in space, yeah, it would not be a humanoid octopus, uh, octopus biologically at all. You don't think it would have any human or octopus properties biologically? I think if we found something that looked kind of like that, you would, like we would interpret it that way, but like you, well, because you're talking about like like studying human anatomy and octopus anatomy being prerequisites for something studying something we find in space that to our eyes looks like a human combined with an octopus. Okay, but to be real, wait, to be clear to be clear, that is exactly what I was saying. <laughs> yes, just exactly. in case everyone else but is confused. My, my point is that anything else anything that evolved in a, in a separate planet yeah. 
may may not even be based on the same chemical element as us, yeah. like what Matt was saying. Like, but it, I it was could be talking about it completely different. But I was talking about that it would be because we were searching for humanoid things because but we were only looking for planets that were equally as inhabitable or more so than is Earth. Like a shape, yeah. though, is the thing. Like well, humanoid is a sci-fi term. It just means like yeah. has uh, two arms, two legs, and a head. But like humanoid is a sci-fi term. It's not like a real term. I mean, more or less. I'm sure like. It, it, yeah, it, I think sure. it's more yeah, about, I guess it is just a it's shape, more about though. physical appearance than it is about like biology. To yeah, my, like like if we ran into something that was vaguely human shaped in space, there's very little chance that it would still internally operate the same way that a human does. You know what I'm really proud of? We did not even like go. We did not even touch the hentai part of this. And I'm just like really patting ourselves on the back for this. Yeah, so. that's the wrong everybody. audience for that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, oh, it's the wrong me. people. Maybe our like a listening audience. Maybe not. But like, <laughs> right? No, this was not. This is not the direction the three of us were gonna go. But I just you got. I'm. I'm. I'm, not, I'm gonna admit. I'm a little I, bit shocked at the expressions that you're both giving me. Like I just get. Blown. I feel like I made sense. I'm think, really curious as to what the commenters I'm sorry, are gonna yeah, say. I'm sorry that I'm sorry that we're having trouble getting. I feel like you're being. No, no, no. Up you 100. No, no, no. You 100 percent got what I was saying. That's why I'm confused. <laughs> you just don't like it. I'm going to accept your premise. Okay. Though I don't understand or agree with it whatsoever. No, I'm I going understand. To accept oh, yeah. It yeah. And so say that. that that if we found a humanoid octopus on another planet, yeah. that our knowledge of sh- octopuses, which you're saying is lacking, yes. would actually hurt us in understanding this new creature. Because we would have uh, biases and preconceived notions about how this life form should function, which okay. if good it's point. an alien... That's a good point. ...is like, you know... So we'll be like, oh, it has tentacles, because we understand tentacles as they appear on life forms on Earth yeah. as we understand them. But, like, these tentacles might function... They might have bones. And if we assume that they don't, then, like, our knowledge is... But any scientist worth his salt will... We did will. mess that up with dinosaurs, didn't we? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Good, yeah that's good, true. good analogy. We're not even... Yeah, we're not even great at identifying things on our own Oh, I actually have. I have a, I have a actually, whole podcast on dinosaurs, by the way. Oh, good. I'm excited for that. But yeah. I was going to say, just tying it back around, we do this with ocean creatures now. Mm-hmm. We find things washed up on the beach and try to make assumptions on them based on their carcasses. But, like, people have already been proven wrong on those things. Like, I can't remember exactly... I wish I could remember an example of what I'm saying. Well, this happens But I'm pretty sure we learned stuff about giant squids in between the times that we found a giant squid dead on a beach and then found one alive in the ocean. And people were, even during that short amount of time, and having literally found the body of one, like, realized that they had been wrong about stuff that yeah, they Yeah, something had, they about it existing in the pressurized water versus, like, up on the beach changes its physiology in some way yeah, that, exactly, like, confuses yeah. us. It doesn't actually look the way that people thought it did when it's actually in its natural environment. Yeah, like a blobfish. So like, you know what a blobfish okay, so is? Okay, so you guys... Yeah. yeah. So you guys are both of the opinion, and maybe this is correct, <laughs> but you guys are both of the opinion that if we ever ran into an octopus humanoid alien in space, uh, it would be entirely... Irrelevant to both humanoids, humans and octopi 100%. on Earth. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> almost, almost certain. It would be very, very unlikely. You know how like we Even can only if... see in the color spectrum, like the spectrum of... Vis- of this of... makes me so angry. Why? <laughs> because I can't see all the colors. That's, yeah. You, yeah. It's, like it's think of how tiny the, the spectrum of things we can see. Yeah. It, you know, that's a metaphor for our understanding of... Just existence in general, you know. <laughs> wow. So, like, you're thinking, uh, you're, 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 you're you're describing it as humanoid octopus. You're yeah. using two things that you understand from Earth to describe this thing. Like these yeah. are these words are not adequate for anything okay. that you're going to find in space. I feel that these, yeah. these will break your brain. <laughs> okay, so then it sounds like the the real answer to this is that Earth and that that uh, underwater. Not closer space. I did. I, I think, <laughs> yeah, that's what. That's opposite what. direction of space. I'd argue it's like underwater probably would teach us a lot about our past, but oh, stuff from space is going to teach us about the rest of the universe, and they're really not going to even collide. Like it's not the same kind of. That's information, kind of an I interesting theory that like underwater is our past and space is our future. I kind of, yeah. I kind of never really thought about it that way, but that's <laughs> actually super cool idea because here I was getting mad as my brain was frying um that like water exists and I'm like what are we doing in space <laughs> that was that must have 100% been my line of thinking as I read this yeah yeah and I, st- <laughs> I still take issue with your with your assertion that we can't do two things <laughs> right that's yeah that's, no, that's no, my no. main it's not that thing we can't, we're not though <laughs> we're not doing two things to the same degree sure like because you you guys both said but there is no underwater NASA so like we're doing yeah. it but like there's that one octopus well, no, chick, right. think, and then there's like actually, astronauts there probably is I just don't know about them because yeah. they weren't. Then they're not prop- NASA. The, no, they just didn't NASA. make propaganda about the 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 Russians underwater. The, yeah, the the 
the what am I trying to say? The Marine Biology Society doesn't have propaganda supporting the things they're doing, but it doesn't mean they're not doing them. Yeah. All right. That's I, pretty much that's pretty much all it is. It's, it's I understand. Like, it's the same kind of argument of like I, I I always got frustrated when people would talk about like how much money we were we spent on space. So like why go to space? We haven't solved our problems on Earth, and it's like. Do you know? Do you know how much money there is? Yeah. <laughs> like why? Why? Infinite money. How much do you we think flushed that down the amount toilet? is causing a, a a problem not being over here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I feel you, Matt. When I had originally brought this concept up to you over text message like seven months ago, uh-huh. what were you thinking we were going to talk about? I th- pretty much this. Okay. Like, <laughs> like it didn't go down the same road, but yeah. I, but I, I figured that would be the uh, okay the general like. Underwater is as unknown as space and that yeah. interesting talk about. Is underwater as unknown as space? Which one do you think is more unknown? We know a lot about space. Yeah. Like we know a, an insane fre- freakish amount about space, actually. So you think we know more about space than we do about like our, our own you, oceans and ocean creatures? I'd say, I'd say it's a little bit unfair because there's more space. So it's hard to say, you know, it's like, like there's... There's yeah, so we objectively know more about the ocean than we do about space. Just percentage-wise, because yeah. there's less ocean, so we know more about I guess that's true. the ocean than we do about space. Because at least, because it's kind of the idea that you don't know what you can't know. Like, we at least know there are species we don't right. know underwater, I guess but that's in what space... It is. We, we know how much there... We, we have a rough idea of, like, how much can is there to learn about the water. It's like, there's only this much water. We don't even know how big space is, so... Sure. Yeah. All right, well... Time is up. I hope we have... Um, we should have just talked about space the whole time. Yeah. I think I've probably <laughs> like managed to successfully offend both marine biologists and astronauts uh-huh. um, and squids, octopi, humans, all, all the of the above. All people listening to our podcast, really, just marine biologists, astronauts, octopi. The, yeah. one, the one, like, the one Cthulhu human in a, in a planet under light years away is just crying. This is the only podcast they have access to, and they're just yeah. sad that we've just humiliated them like this. <laughs> Sorry, so, buddy. Um, all right, so... Kyle, you got to wrap it up. Um, you can you can attempt to use Matt as your lifeline once uh, once more because I don't know when he's going to be back. Jesus, but, uh, I don't know. Well, searching I the mean, depths of your mind uh, while meditating is a lot like searching the depths of space and the ocean. That works. That's a good metaphor. Yeah. I was going to say when I die, I hope I come back as an octopus humanoid on another planet <laughs> and can and can speculate about things that might be in Earth oceans. That would be cool. I'm realizing I only know simple. the only thing I know about Buddhism is meditating. One last very important <laughs> question: When I say octopus humanoid, what are you guys picking? That looking well, you, like. you said like Thomas's character from the campaign. Okay, so, I'm so definitely that's just picturing Cthulhu with I'm an octopus like, face. Yeah, a yeah. guy with a squid on his head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, not just like not like a gingerbread man, but just like tentacles. That was gingerbread unclear. Man. Well, that was unclear. That wasn't in my like head. humanoid shape, except all of the limbs are tentacles, and then the head is a human. No, he had hands in my in my. Yeah. Get hands and arms. Yeah. In I think my we mind. probably had it right. The I, I regret I regret saying your the other version one, so. is less like either of the things you were combining than our version. Sorry, <laughs> <was. laughs> right. it's time to go. It's time to leave. Okay.